And there's another lovely story that Paul and Yubi Fraser, who won the Ironman eight times and who won 28 Ironman triathlons, she's a, actually from South Africa. And she she was such a talent. She went to America after one year of training, came third in the Ironman the first time. And she phoned me and she said, Tim, I've read this paper. What do you think? Should I eat more fat? I said, yes, Paula, eat more fat. But at the time, I was promoting the high-carb diet. And she interpreted it as uh, she should go on a low-carb diet. She went on the low-carb diet. She won all these Ironman. And when she retired, she said, the best piece of advice I got was to eat the low-carb diet. And I said, Paula, but I never told you that. <laughs> Having developed type 2 diabetes as a result of following this high-carb diet and running 70 marathons or ultramarathons and still getting type 2 diabetes, I'm a bit more suspicious about the health effects of the diet of these recreational athletes became pre-diabetic when they ate the low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet, they became pre-diabetic. When they ate the high-fat, low-carbohydrate diet, their control was absolutely perfect. And Andrew Kutnick, who was crucial in this analysis, showed that those athletes who burned the most fat were the ones whose glucose control improved the most when they went on to the high fat diet. So that was the first time linking fat oxidation in muscle with more resistance to type 2 diabetes or prediabetes. The first study showing prediabetes developing without people putting on weight or changing their exercise habits. The only thing they changed was the diet. So it was a crossover trial. So essentially we had a low carb, high fat group and a high carb, low fat group. And then they crossed over at the midpoint. So they each did that, that diet for four weeks. Then they switched and did the other diet for four weeks. And so uh, what you're describing there is an actual onset of uh, these abnormal glucose dynamics as tracked by a continuous glucose monitor on, during the high carb, low fat portion. Is that right? That's correct. Now, do they represent all runners in the world? I would say they probably do, that 30% of runners eating this high-carbohydrate diet in their 30s or 40s, if we tested them properly, we'd show that they're pre-diabetic. When we started running in the 1970s, you trained really hard. And it, at the end of three hours, that was the end of the race. I mean, if you hadn't finished within three hours, there was no, no one hung around to, to see you finish in six or seven or eight hours. They were gone after three hours. And everyone was lean but really lean because they trained hard, but they didn't eat so much carbs. Now you go to these marathons and you see that people finish in six hours. They're a metabolic disaster. You know, they're carrying all this extra fat, but they believe because they're running, they're going to be healthy. And that's not true. And it's a simple, if you've got visceral obesity, if you've got a tummy and your waist is too wide, carbs are killing you. And mm -hmm. people have to understand that, you know, and the reason why I'm so vocal about this is I watched my dad die from type 2 diabetes and I couldn't help him because I didn't understand.